Dear friend, my name is Mansiant, or Håkon. I'm from Norway. I'm a monk, and I'm a healer, something which I've been doing for many, many years. And I'm a musician. The music you can hear slightly in the background. Let me turn it up a little bit. That's mine. A star is born at Hotel E. Odeon. Ah, let me sit like this. I've been watching a lot of YouTube lately. I don't have a TV, I don't want to watch TV. I hate TV, but. And I've seen a lot of gurus. There are so many people who try to tell you, you should do this, you should eat this, you should do that. Whoa, all you have to do to feel good is to send me $100, $1,000, sign up for my class, do this, do that. Happiness is there. Happiness is here. This is where it resides. And all you need to do is find it. And then, how do you find it? Well, it's quite simple. Start living your life. Stop living the life of your family. Stop living the life of your friends. Stop living the life that society expects you to live. Live your life. What ignites you? What makes you happy? Is it music? Like, like me? Singing is my passion. I love singing. I put, up a, I put a link in the info box. Sing Academy. Because I love singing and I love to share the love of singing. But that is my path. And yours may be different. But consider this. I have no idea how old you are. I'm 53 myself. I worked since I was 17. I've also had some times when I've not been working. I worked with social work since I was yeah, 17. Mostly, that's what I've been doing, working with disadvantaged people. And that has been a gift. But I also met the system. You know, the system with a big ass. Real big ass. And I've seen such a lot of horrible treatment of people. I've seen Kids has been exploited in the worst possible way. I could have told you some stories. I won't. I don't want to ruin your day or evening or whatever. <laughs> but we come with this box. This is where you're supposed to be. Box. <laughs> <laughs> we come with this box. This is how life is supposed to be. You got to go to school, learn how to read and write, all that. Then you go to college, then you get a job. You stay in your job until retirement. And then you save up enough money that you can get a real holiday for the rest of your life. <laughs> it's so stupid. So many of us are in jobs where we don't feel good. So many of us are in a society where we don't feel good. We 
I mean, to me, creating, singing, creating my instrumental music, that gives me joy. That is, to me, what I'm passionate about. And of course, I could have stayed in my job as a social worker. I made a lot more money <laughs> than I was in that. Right now, I'm like totally bankrupt, close to it. <laughs> and that is okay. Because I would rather die than to not live with passion. And this this may sa- sound strange coming from a, a monk. I want to live with passion. I mean, we're supposed to sit there and meditate all the time. And, ooh, be in communion with our God or Buddha or Shiva, whatever. <laughs> when I really sing or when I'm really creating, when I'm in flow, that is amazing. And if that means I have to live on much less, I don't care. Because, okay, it can be a little bit private, a bit too much perhaps for you. I have lived a tough life. My father died when I was three years old. Um, he had a, a child coming with another woman than my mother. Uh, she wasn't told about me until she was 18. I wasn't in my father's burial because my mother had abandoned my father. So I never never got the ritual of, of seeing him go. Okay, and it went on. My, my mom was a psychologist. She was probably one of the world's, <laughs> or Norway's, best psychologist. She worked with, at the end, um, as a pr- in a private practice, with uh, mostly with people with uh, schizophrenia, paranoid schizophrenia, or real severe problems, and with, with youth. Uh, but before that, she, she moved a lot lot around I moved with her so when I was eight I got a stepdad and he didn't like me not at all and I lived in a small community in Telmark uh, and I wasn't very much liked there either in school so I was ostracized um, which meant that I had no friend, no friends at all, from um, the age of 10 till 14, something like that. The one day I found my passion, because I was bullied a lot, and I found my passion. There was this guy, one of my bullies, he pushed me to the ground, it was winter. And something snapped at me. And I said, no way, this is enough. So I jumped up and it felt like Superman flying, you know, with his cape and his fist first, and this hit him in the head, in the face. And he fell down and he was like, what? This tiny kid. It's me. After that, a lot of the bullies, they, they, it stopped. When I was 14, I became head of the student council, arranged a strike against their principal. 
he was a total douche. He was mean. He stepped on others. He stepped on those who he had. One of his jobs was to um, to teach people, people, pupils who weren't good in in math. And after I became uh, the head of the student council, I was told that he was not very good at it. So I asked to sit in in one of his classes. It was like. Well, Arne, can you tell me what is one plus three? Hmm. It was horrible. But I arranged a strike. And ever since then, I fought against the system. And I fought for those who are weak, or considered weak. I worked with people with, I once tried creating a list of the different diagnoses that uh, they had, but I gave up ADHD, psychopathology or sociopathology as it's called now, uh, Tourette's, uh, bipolar, schizophrenia, no schizophrenia, uh, and a lot of the people with multiple handicaps, um, what used to be called vegetative people, which means that they have no way of expression. Uh, a lot work with uh, with autists, people within the autistic spectrum. Um, yeah, a lot. And to me. Every day at work has been a gift. But something that I realize now is is that I am like an empath. And what what does that mean? It means that I suck up emotions. I'm a sucker for emotions. <laughs> Uh, that is actually part of the reason I become a monk now, because lust is one of the emotions that are really hard to shield yourself for. And I've, well, I've, I'm a healer, as I said. I have taken um, schooling in Salung, which is Tibetan energy healing. And um, I was under Tulku Lama Lobsang, my, my Lama. Um, look him up. Um, and also Hilde Brekke, uh, who was his proxy teacher. Um, amazing people. And that taught me a lot also about myself. But was, when I was 27 years old, I mean, Okay, this law law story. I mean, started working seventeen years old uh, with uh, one of an autist, uh, considered one of the toughest ones in in Norway. And but I met so many youth children, and grown ups who have been abused. Been abused by the system, been abused by adults. Also, people with uh, what I now see are generational traumas, which is something I often see with um, African Americans or Ameri Africans uh, and uh, Jews uh, who have generational traumas. Look up ep epic genetics and you'll see what I mean. But I've seen so many people who are headbutting against the system. They don't want to be part of this world we created. 
because it is stupid. We spend, let's see, an average seven to eight hours a day, five days a week. Let's just make it 40 days, no, 40 hours each week at work. And for many of us, what we do the rest of our time is we watch TV. And we eat. Many of us read. And then the weekend comes, and then you gotta have a little drink, or maybe smoke a little green, or brown, or some other drugs and then you can have fun when you're not yourself then you can show your passion or you can show your passion when you go to a soccer game or a football game or whatever sport strikes you as best but our most the most important part of our time eight hours of work they are spent doing something we don't like. Because if you look at employee satisfaction and all that, many people are dissatisfied. Instead of doing what we love. I mean, because I know there is something that you love. I used to be married. Incredible woman. And her passion was interior design. And she was good at it. But still she's stuck in a job. Fighting against the system. Fighting for her children. Instead of saying, oh, screw this. I want to do what I love. And there are so many of us. We don't dare to grab the dream. What are you excited about? I mean, take a look at your life. What gives you pleasure? Is it drawing? Is it singing? Is it storytelling? What makes you happy? And don't there are no gurus who can tell you this is what makes you happy. That is something you know. So do something with it. And don't let anybody tell you about your wishes, your dream. Don't let them tell you, nah, that's not a good idea. You have to be realistic. It's difficult to make it as an artist. Or it's made difficult to make it as a storyteller or a writer or a monk. <laughs> like, I'm quite new to this. So <laughs> It is your life. Your life is yours. Live it. Love it. And... Okay. I'll be a bit more private. My life, which has been quite tough, has meant that I've had some really, really dark nights of the soul. Really, really dark. When I talk with people about suicidal thoughts, I know about it from the inside. When I talk about trying to commit suicide, I know about it. I've been on the other side.
and I'm not afraid, but I don't search that. Because this life is what we make it. This life can be heaven, this life can be hell. And I'm thinking, follow your dreams, do what you want. And you'll be a lot closer to hell. Did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be a lot closer to heaven. A lot. And don't let anybody tell you, I don't care about their religion. I don't care if they're a guru, a priest, a monk. If they're, uh, it doesn't matter what religion, don't tell them that you live your life in the wrong way. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, you're a man, don't love men, or you're a woman, don't love women. Who are they to tell? No. Love is love. Love between, between consenting adults is okay. Love is love. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. I mean, to me, I like women. Yeah, I'm stupid. I became a monk. <laughs> but that's, that's my preference. And I would like those, if you are one of them, those who tell others that, ooh, homosexuality, bad, we got to convert you. I would ask, ask you, if I told you, you have to be, if you're a man, be with a man, what emotion does it strike in you? How do you feel? Doesn't feel good, does it? Or if you're a woman, you have to be with a woman. Nah. You have to be with the one you love. Because to me, that is the only thing we carry with us. When we die, I don't know if you have a soul. I know that this is not all there is, but I really adhere to the thought that it's only love that lives on. Sometimes it's in memories that we leave in others, the love we shared. Other times it's perhaps something that moves on, like love is an energy. And I like that. So, and to come back to my original point. Okay, it's a bit paradoxical. I'm sitting here telling you, you shouldn't listen to gurus, and I'm a monk. <laughs> uh, telling you, yeah, I know, but to all the gurus out there, you don't have the answers because the answer resides inside of everybody. All they have to do is search for it. And it all starts with creating a life you love. I'll finish there, it's almost 25 minutes. Namaste, assalamu alaikum, shalom, God bless you, blessed be. This is mentioned, oh my, my name, 
I know it's. I should have thought of that sooner. I created my artist's name from man, because I'm a man, and ancient. I forgot to think how I was going to pronounce it. But I found that mansions, that's okay. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Look for your passion. Look for the joy inside you. If you have to quit your job tomorrow, do it. If you have to leave your wife or your husband tomorrow, do it. If you have to move to a cave somewhere just to find solitude and peace for a little while, do it. It's okay. Or if you have to, if you're one of those who are in the closet, go out of it. Just break down the doors. Just screw this. Sorry. Beep. <laughs> Live your life. It's your life. It's the only one we're given that we know of. I think there might be something more. I like the thought of my mother, psychologist Ed Nurelon. She wanted to come back as a dandelion because dandelions break through the tarmac. I like the thought of her becoming a dandelion. Maybe there is something more than this, I'm sure, but I won't tell you what it is. <laughs> You have to find out. But believe in yourself. Don't ever stop believing. Find your passion. Go with your passion. Goodbye.